Let's roll. Level three has begun. Looking at the Senior Bowl. So the Senior Bowl is at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Pretty early, actually. Here's another one I'm going to have to bet overnight because I'm going to be on a plane. So um, I'm going to be landing right around then or whatever. So hopefully. Um, I'm taking the same planes that the um, the door just flew off the other day, Cam. The oh, 737 no. Max. Oh, boys, yeah. Uh, and even... Uh. There's even all kinds of whistleblowers that are telling people, don't take the planes, don't believe them, they're not safe. Um, there's been all kinds of reports this week. And normally airlines will screw you around, but they're taking it serious. So if you're uncomfortable flying on it, they'll put you on another flight. But it's not like they have a million flights a day. So, yeah, another flight a week later or something. Like, if you want to, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like... Yeah. See, they're like, well, you gotta, if you don't get on this plane, then you're not really leaving today. So it's one of those type no. of deals. Yeah, sure, we'll get you another flight at another time or whatnot. Um, but the way I look at it is every one of these planes that flies in the world, were they were all grounded, right? There's like 1,700 of them or something like that. They were all grounded, like every one of them taken off, and every one of them went through a 12-hour inspection. So the way I look at it is these are probably safer than the other planes that haven't been checked. Excellent point. Yeah, they had to do the safety checks. Hey, they, you're a better man than me, man. I, I hate flying, and I usually, like, want a tranquilizer dart, but you said it. You got to get on the plane if you want to go to Vegas. So yeah, it's a quicker flight for you, uh, too. I, I don't worry about crashes, but now I got to sit there worrying I'm going to fly through the, the door or the window. Like, something's yeah, going to rip open. That's like, yes. Now I, like, will I be able to sleep because I'm going to be like, well, but whatever, if I fall asleep and I get sucked out into the sky, it's a blaze of glory. <laughs> just, 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 oh, there I, there I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was flying right. Out. What are you gonna do? Bad. You're out like the door. if you're sleeping, yeah. and the next thing you know, yeah. you're just flying through the air in a chair. You'll have a couple of seconds yeah. of shock, and uh, not to be not to be gruesome or whatever, but it was one of the craziest days, Gabe. That's how Payne Stewart and all those guys died. They I would rather not to. And up and up, like, like they basically were like sleeping as the plane went into the atmosphere there, and they all like all they all passed away. It was the craziest thing ever. If I was in a plane crash, I'd rather go down on land and water too. I don't want to land in the I water. Agree. Oh, I couldn't I'd agree with you more. I'd rather crash into a mountain. Boom. Yes, <laughs> it's yes, over. because it's open like, water. You I don't want to be like in the movies, yeah. like water, in the water. Oh my god! Like, I couldn't like... agree more, dude. I've been trapped <laughs> underwater when I got hit in the head with like a, a windsurfer, and I was almost like knocked out cold. I couldn't get. It's scary, man. Gabe, being trapped trapped underwater and ice that is my that is probably the biggest fear. Trapped under ice, Metallica style. Yeah, mm, not that. No thanks. <laughs> Shout out to no, everyone. Thank I'm serious. Thanks, Sam. So Tony yeah. Finn's going to step up in it in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you know, like I said, you don't have a choice. And you know what? The funny that it's not funny, but you know what's crazy too is those people that the the door got sucked off, and you're sitting there like fearing like you're going to die. They got a fifteen hundred dollar voucher each only. That's not enough. It's ridiculous. So like. So the whole thing is, so even if something really bad happens, the airlines aren't responsible. Like, if you read the fine print, you're the one that got on the plane. Like, you know what I mean? No one forced you to get it. Like, you accept a lot of responsibility for this. Like, people always think, oh, I'm going to sue them. Good luck. No. Like I said, like, and whoever, I've never read the fine print of an airline ticket. Nor have I. It's like 28 pages. And it's like, it's like literally 2 million words. And there's a reason why it's so small. Like, they're, we're not to blame if you fly out of the plane. <laughs> like, mm. like, it's one of those type of deals. It's a very, um, they've, they've got good attorneys. They're not dumb. So imagine that. You fly out of the window and you get offered 1500 bucks after for it. <laughs> you make more money, like, getting hit, like, crossing the street, suing someone for jaywalking. You're damn right you, you will. Know I mean? Like, so something like, on ice. Yes, you're right. Because this whole thing, like, oh, I live through a lot of fear, but at least I know I'm going to be able to sue them after. Right? No, you really won't. <laughs> like, that's the whole thing. And then they give you a voucher for the same damn airline that nearly just killed you. It's not like they're Excellent. giving you a voucher for another airline. So you're like, I don't right. want to fly on your airline. You just airline. Like, you just, exactly. I don't want to, like, I like, I like for your the voucher. Though. Yeah, I like your pick. I'll take mountain crash over over water or ice. Yeah, definitely. That would be the worst, man. Because you might be still alive. God, don't even make me think about it. I'm sad. Ugh, give me the creeps. Yeah, I'll, I'll be uh, I'll be all right.
<laughs> yeah, you'll be all right. I'll be, I'll, I'll be all right. I've been worried more before. I flew into Costa Rica before. I was in Costa Rica, and I actually flew to El Salvador and stuff, and I was on Colombian Airlines, and mm. I even looked up. I never should have done it, but I looked up. Because some airlines, whatever, actually never crashed, but I looked it up, Colombian Airlines, and it was like 10 pages of stuff. It was like crashed into the ocean, crashed into a mountain, crashed into this. Bad I'm, all like, record. I'm like, so you're telling me I'm taking Colombian Airlines out of El Salvador to Costa Rica? Oh, yeah, this this is like, this sounds safe. That's <laughs> sketchy. That's sketchy. But it was fine. <laughs> yeah, you it was, did all you know, that. It yeah. was fine. And I said, Tony Finn's going to step up and in in a couple of minutes. Uh, with us, we're going to welcome our AM radio affiliates here. Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gable Moran. See the fifth place, the hustlers, the people, the bus, and everybody else in between the Friday Night Free Show. It's level three. Welcome to the range. We've been kicking it. 180 minutes of the fastest 180 minutes in sports talk and television radio. This is our final show in this time slot for the next week. So just a schedule uh, announcement for those of you joining us right now on the AM radio affiliates. If you don't hear my voice at this time next week, it's because we're going to be on a little bit earlier. Go to sportsgrid.com slash where to watch or follow me on Twitter at sports rage. And um, we ha- we're going to be posting videos all week long straight from the strip of Las Vegas, Nevada. If you're going to be in Vegas, come see us. We're going to be live breaking down the big game at the MGM Grand Sportsbook at uh, 5 o'clock daily, 5 o'clock Vegas time, 8 o'clock Eastern. So we're going to be on at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. Countdown to kickoff is on. Our prop sheet is starting to grow uh, right now. I've got 12 picks that I'm ready to pull the trigger on right now. I've got about another dozen uh, or so when it's all said and done that we're going to pull the trigger on. I don't think we're going to quite make it to 58 bets for Super Bowl (laughs) 58, but... I think we'll probably get into the 20s uh, here, but we're not forcing anything. There's a lot of props that I play every year in the Super Bowl, no matter who's playing. And one of them that we play a lot, and we're going to play it again this year, and I really do like it, is will there be more points in the first half or the second half? I think there's going to be more points in the second half of this football game. I expect this game to start off a little bit slow, and then it'll open up. Last time these two teams played four years ago, it got crazy Uh, in the fourth quarter, and I'm expecting things to get crazy as well. We know it's going to be a super close game. Winning margin could be something worth a look. We'll take a look at the winning margin uh, prices, the famous one to six, which in the Super Bowl has been a big-time moneymaker in recent years. Super Bowls used to be blowouts in the early days, but those days are gone. Super Bowls have been really close uh, lately, so the one to six winning margin bet You're getting it like plus 300, plus 325 for both teams is definitely something worth looking into. This is Sports Rage. would maybe go in a different direction or at least listen to some people with some different ideas. If you were going to retain Mike Tomlin as coach, and I believe with both feet that you should, that you shouldn't let him really anywhere near this hire. That he had proved over the years that this was not an era area of comfort or expertise for him. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid.
Oh, it's a beautiful time. NBA players are going wild. If I had to guess, a lot of people are going to get real angry. No defense, no defense, no defense. Oh, uh, see, I want people to understand this, okay? Because we're always honest. When I take that big pause, that means we're thinking about betting big. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman the early line and what it all means. Individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not bought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news, trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterback. Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live. Just prime time. Yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race. That was late good night. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid. We did. Didn't like the two and a half. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. Man, it seems like just it's been crazy with all this coaching stuff that's been going on. The Super Bowl is coming mm-hmm. up. There's been so much going on in the world of sports, but um, and you know, in in the world, there's always these big stories all the time. But Carl Weathers passed away. R.I.P. Yeah. to Carl Weathers, former Raider, uh, B.C. Lion, um, and of course Apollo Creed in Predator, and somebody that was just even though he wasn't real. He was real in a sense, like Apollo Creed, like movies, like Blood Sports, a good example, like Jean Claude Jean Claude Van Damme. Jean Claude Van Damme isn't as big as you know. What I mean, some of the other big action, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and stuff like that. But you talk to like I don't know, like seventy five percent of old school UFC fighters and mixed martial artists, they'll tell you, man, I got into this because of Jean Claude Van Damme and Blood Sport. I wanted to be like him in the movie, and. Apollo Creed was almost like Muhammad Ali or something. And I saw a video, uh, a tribute tonight, Sylvester Stallone talking about him. And he said, you know, he was like Ali when he walked into the room. And like in the movie, you wouldn't think of like great acting and like Rocky and stuff, but it actually is awesome. Like he actually like brought the character to life. And without Apollo Creed, like there's no Rocky. Like the, he was so integral, like the character and like everything is part of the movie. And it's so one cool thing too. I've interviewed a lot of cool people over the years, but I remember I was really stoked. I've forgotten a lot of them, but I was really stoked uh, to have Carl Weathers on and Apollo Creed. And I told him the story about how I saw the movie Rocky in the theaters when it came out. And I was like the only one in the theater pulling for Apollo Creed. And I remember I told my mother after the movie, I said, this Rocky guy would get killed by real life by this guy. <laughs> it's so true. You're right? so right. Yes. Because, you know, he hung Rocky. around in the first movie, and I was like, yeah, yeah. it's kind of a reach. Yeah. Like, Apollo yeah. Creed would have killed him and stuff. But <laughs> um, hell of great movies. Uh, rest in peace. Like I said, like, larger than life. You know what I mean? Even though yeah. it wasn't a real boxer, it's like like real boxers are all giving their condolences to the athletes and stuff like that. On a quick note, too, with Carl Weathers, another guy similar to The Rock. Carl Weathers was a CFL football player after he was with the Raiders, played in the CFL, and then he got into acting after and obviously much more successful with his acting. And for people who don't know, The Rock, you know, maybe you know The Rock played football, but The Rock was a Miami Hurricane. His dream was to play in the National Football League, not be a wrestler. He wanted to be a football player. He didn't want to like follow his family's footsteps. He wanted to do his own thing. So he wanted to be a football player. Wasn't quite good enough for the NFL, so he went to the CFL, and he was on the Calgary Stampeders, and Wally Buono, the legendary coach, told him, listen, you've made the team. You're going to be a backup linebacker, and you're going to play on special teams. And he goes, quite frankly, I don't know why you'd want to do this. He goes, you're a wrestling star. You were born to be a wrestler. Your family are all wrestlers. He goes, you should be a wrestler. And 
Because quite he goes, you're not that good at this. He goes, you're good enough to make the team, but you're never going to make it to the NFL. Wally Bono like gave him this like straight talk. Things worked out pretty well for Dwayne Johnson. Not a guy who owns football leagues. Yeah. Let's bring in. Uh, so, so the whole point is, Cam, who's the guy in the CFL now that's going to be the next mega superstar action hero? There's a track record of this. <laughs> you know what I mean? What a question. You play in the CFL that's, 20 that's years a, later. That's 20 years later, question. you're like, a, I don't know, The Rock <laughs> came from the CFL. Carlos yeah, Apollo exactly. came from the CFL. What, what am I saying? Yeah. Chad Kelly? No, I don't know. Like, that's a, what are you even saying, Gabe? Like, that's a crazy question. I don't know who. Who in the CFL is going to be a movie star and own football leagues? I don't know. That's tough. <laughs> Doug My boy Nick Lewis. Doug, yeah, Doug Flutie says Tony Finn. Yeah, Doug Flutie. <laughs> nice, Tony. Good to see you, nice. Tony. Hey, Tony. Good to see you guys. Yeah. How all are right, you? Doing? So, uh, Tony. Good. I'm all right. I'm sad that Apollo Creed died. Carl Weathers died, but yeah, I'm, not, I'm all right. I, you know, yeah, I, I heard the same thing. I mean, I heard it today and I didn't give it a lot of attention. Why? Because I had gotten sidetracked and I couldn't. I mean, I started reading about this and that and I. Be in the same place you guys are. I know everything about Paul Creed, and I know very little about Paul Creed, the actor. He's well, you get Carl Weathers. Yeah, yeah, like I said, yeah, you probably didn't know he played for played football for the BC Lions. Um, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. And did you know the Rock story about how he was on the Calgary Stampeders yeah. and Wally Bono told him he kind of sucked and he should be a wrestler instead? <laughs> I didn't know it as deeply and as uh, in depth and and as, as intimate as you did, he, obviously. But I knew <laughs> I knew a little bit. The about Rock it. should pay Wally Bono, like he should buy him a house. Like it's good call, the Rock actually. has made like five billion dollars. Great life. Say, you know, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I got this because of that football coach in Calgary that was a jerk to me and told me yeah. that I'm not very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no. No, tell it to me. Just give me the truth. I don't know. The Rock has yeah, given him credit. So I don't know. He's maybe he's I don't know, maybe bought him a nice watch, a Rolex or something like that. That'd be nice. So yeah. Tony, are you gonna be able to yeah. uh buy our listeners Rolexes with all the winning picks you're gonna give us right now? You don't have to buy well, them the watches. They have to buy their own watches, but you give them the winners. Yeah, let's do it that way because uh, that way, uh, <laughs> that way they, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, let's do it that way. Well, if it's you, you're going to give them counterfeit <laughs> fake watches. Yeah, yeah, we, we we need the real, you know, we need I the have, real deal. I have one of those. I have one of those counterfeit uh, Rolexes. Yeah, that's uh, and I knew. Let's I used to, honest. I used to have one. I too. knew it was counterfeit when I bought it. Me too. My <laughs> mother gave it to me. She got it like Hong Kong. I had it too. <laughs> Once I was interviewing Frank Robinson, and I stuck my hand out. And he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. He stopped like the press conference. He goes, hold on a second. Like in front of everybody, he goes, what are you wearing? I said, I like my new watch. And I had like a Rolex, except it was fake. And uh, he goes, let me see it. Take it off. And I showed it to him. And right away, he goes, man, this thing is like, (laughs) he goes, this ain't no Rolex. (laughs) And like, like right away, like in front of everyone, he goes, man, he's like, where'd you get this? Singapore? And he starts laughing and he takes off his watch and he goes, put that on. And it was a real Rolex. And I was like, oh, can I keep it, Frank? He's like, oh, no, give me my watch back, man. Like, say, give me my watch back. <laughs> but, yeah, I had a fake Rolex that caught it. It looked good. But it was one of those deals, Cam. It actually made my um, – it was so, like, bad. It made my wrist oh. green and stuff totally oh, yeah, after a while. Oh, like, yeah, the old skin tip. That's a weird color. That's what you get. the hell this thing is, man. That's bad merchandise. I stopped wearing it when I had some weird, like, stuff on my skin, Cam. I was like, After yeah, I think buddy. I better stop wearing that watch. Yeah, you, can't be, you can't be getting gangrene from from Singapore Rolexes there. That's, that's a problem. Fake fake watches. Yeah, they rub yeah. off after a while. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what would you think of that Butler-Creighton game tonight, Tony? Pretty yeah, wild, huh? 99-98. Well, this – yeah, this isn't – this isn't uh, – this isn't the Butlers of old, is it? Uh, this seemed yeah, like – They're scoring 48 points. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not, they're not playing – they're not playing deliberate basketball, at, you know, at a pace that the old Butler teams we you and I we've grown up with, right? Um, but that was a pretty. I, I saw an in game on that at one eighty or something at one time, and I just said, well, "My goodness, can you believe that Butler in game one eighty? What what's going on? What's happening in the world?" So, I cashed a ticket over one ninety four and a half just because I'm a degenerate, and I was like, "I really? got to win something on this." Yeah, it got it got there, it got to one ninety seven. What what do you, you like tomorrow, Tony? First uh, first time since 1994 that we have three top 10 matchups on the college hardwood on a Saturday. Well, I, I will tell you this. I How about this? How many times do you think Bill Self's been a dog, an underdog, period, 
in his career, in his tenure at Kansas. How many times do you think he's been a dog at home in Allen Fieldhouse in his tenure? Uh, Never. As KU coach. Uh, no. Well, I think one other time. That was one? talking to earlier. I didn't ask specifics. I could I think, think like dogs. Two? It's like in a championship game against Kentucky or something. You know what I mean? And, and the, But. Yes. Yeah, you know, one where they, I don't know, like one where they've gotten points in his first year type thing, but as you stated. Is, so are you I, saying, is it a blind bet on Kansas yeah. just because you're getting points? Houston yes. are better than they Whoa. are. I, I remember last week I told you I'm, I'm going to bet, not blindly, but I'm anytime sells a dog home or away, I'm on him. And then last week I got four and a half in that, that, uh, that Iowa State game and a three pointer with no time left on the clock by McCulloch gives me the cover. So. Uh, it, the, the beat goes on, but yeah, I'm on, I'm on Kansas. Easy. Right, never in half. doubt. We're going to get Cam Stewart Super Bowl uh, props and some of his best bets uh, on the other side. Tony always likes to criticize and uh, critique his picks. We'll see what Tony has. Saturday called basketball and the Super Bowl. direction or at least listen to some people with some different ideas if you were going to retain mike tomlin as coach and i believe with both feet that you should that you shouldn't let him really anywhere near this hire that he had proved over the years that this was not an era area of comfort or expertise for him pharrell coast to coast only on sports grid Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows that QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's a beautiful time. NBA players are going wild. If I had to guess, a lot of people are going to get real angry. No defense. No defense. No defense. Oh, uh, see, I want people to understand this, okay? Because we're always honest. When I take that big pause, that means we're thinking about betting big. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman Trophy the early line. and what it all means, individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon, not bought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news, trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live. Just prime time. Yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race. That was late good night. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. We did like a two and a half. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Gable Moransi. Shout out to everybody joining us on the 50,000 watt juggernaut, the mightier 1090 ESPN radio in the house. SoCal kicking it. If you're going to be on the strip in Vegas, 
uh, next week at all. Stop by the MGM Grand Sportsbook. We're going to be breaking down the big game uh, live at 5 o'clock Las Vegas uh, time, 8 o'clock Eastern on these networks. Go to sportsgrid.com slash where to watch and or follow me on Twitter at Sports Rage. One guy that I'm really looking forward to speaking to next week in Vegas is uh, Dahani Jones. And uh, Dahani was on the program with us last year, but Dahani Jones, of course, is a Michigan Wolverine. So uh, Dahani's extremely excited, uh, and he had a lot of success at Michigan, too. They were good uh, when he was there. Um, so I'm excited to have a Michigan, former Michigan Wolverine player. We'll talk a lot about Harbaugh. We got our boy, Sean Merriman, uh, going to be live uh, with us. A lot of the usual suspects, and we're locked and loaded as far as the UFC is concerned, man. We've got, like, Marlon Vera. We've got uh, Ilya Taporia. Uh, we've got um, Sheena Bathory from the Power Slap. This woman is unbelievable from uh, from Hungary, the Hungarian, like, nightmare. Look her up. Just look up for people tuning in right now. Look up this Sheena Bathory. And she hit someone so hard, like, the girl somersaulted. Like, she's, like, she's a freight train, uh, this woman. She actually uh, is probably going to scare me. But uh, it's going to be a fun time, and we'll have all kinds of crazy props. So, um, Cam, what do you have for us uh, for the Super Bowl? This is what you say, Marenzi. I know you say you don't have 58, but we'll get there. But I, I just have a few. This is like the, this is the these are the appetizers before we get to the main dish. But we're going to start things off with San Francisco uh, money line uh, in the game here. Gabe, here's the thing. San Francisco, I just like them in this game. I think they're going to win the game. And I know the line has fluctuated one and a half, two. I'm on I'm on the Niners. I know a lot of our guests and I think Tony Finn being the chief fan that he is will like uh, Kansas City. But I'm on San Francisco. I think they win the game. San Francisco plus five over 40 and a half on a seven point teaser. They say don't cross numbers, zeros. I don't care because I'm taking Kansas City plus nine over 40 and a half. Again, I'm teasing at both sides to the over. So we got Kansas City plus nine and the Niners plus five. I think San Francisco Cisco wins this game by three to four points. So that's what we're doing with the teasers to the over. Gabe, we talked about winning margin betting. It's funny. You were mentioning a lot of things that I've already done. San Francisco plus 300 to win between one and six points. You talked about it. Super Bowls being very close now. I think it's going to be a tight game, and San Francisco gets the revenge from the last time they lost to the Chiefs. Same game parlay with a McCaffrey touchdown and San Francisco to win at plus 130. I put a little bit on that. I, you can't lay McCaffrey on its own, so I'm going to put him in with San Francisco for plus. George Kittle, Gabe, we've talked about this. I love Kittle in this spot. Just because he didn't do anything against Detroit doesn't mean he's going to do anything in the Super Bowl. I think he's going to have a monster game. So Kittle, it is a juice, but over three and a half receptions, minus 150. So you got to lay the juice. I love George Kittle, Gabe, and you talked about the yards. It'll be bet as well. Kittle, anytime touchdown, plus 180 for San Francisco. I, as I said before, I think he's going to have a monster game. I would not be surprised if he had two touchdowns. Kelsey for the Chiefs. This one's for you, Tony. We're going with the Swifties here. And Kelsey, I'll lay a quarter for an anytime touchdown with Travis Kelsey. He's a matchup nightmare against any team. And that number to me is quite reasonable, laying just a quarter. Brock Purdy, we talk about it in the last game. He's scampering with his feet. He's going to have to do it a lot. And if Kansas City over pursues, I need Brock Purdy to run, extend the game, and get first downs. 11 and a half seems like a respectable number. I like the over Brock Purdy rushing 11 and a half. And Isaiah Pacheco, over 66 and a half rushing yards for the Kansas City Chiefs. You can run on the Niners. He's a battering ram. I was going to look at re rushing and receiving, but he's very volatile. Sometimes four catches, one, zero, four. He's all over the board. I'll just stick to him on the ground, 66 and a half, Marenzi. That's what I got at Pacheco, four straight games over that total of 66 and a half. That's my starting uh, appetizers. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, I like the yeah. picks. I, I agree with the uh, the Brock Purdy rushing yard prop to the over. Um, at some point, he's going to take off in this game. I agree with uh, with Pacheco. I think Pacheco is going to be a big part of their offense. A lot of people are all in on Pacheco on everything. Pacheco over rush yards. Pacheco over receiving yards. Pacheco over receptions. Pacheco to score a touchdown. Tony, are you buying in that uh, Pacheco is the key? What what are some of the props that you're? What do you think of Cam's picks, and what are you looking at here, Tony? Well, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't argue with Cam's picks. I I disagree with, with Cam's picks. The ones I disagree with are if if you're talking about second level receiving yards uh, or second level in the middle of the field, which is a which is a kittle, 
a tight end. Uh, first and foremost, the Chiefs, the Spags, listen, Coach Spags really concentrates on taking the middle of the field away from the quarterback. Uh, he pushes everything. He, he leverages outside leverage. He pushes everything to the outside that he can. And I think that I don't think that San Francisco is going to make the same mistake they made. Uh, or they're going to run the ball. They're going to run the ball, run the ball. They're not going to make the same mistake that Baltimore made, right, guys? Why didn't Baltimore run the football against Kansas City? That's where you're going to, you know, that's where you make hay, not throwing the football. I think they've shown that, and shown that. And the problem is they gave this Kansas City team a lot of uh, a lot of momentum. The Super Bowl, to me, the Super Bowl is a lot more than just talent. I think top to bottom, San Francisco is a better team. I mean, they have, well, they got nine all pros, and it's ridiculous how many uh, all pros they have, the Pro Bowl players this year compared to Kansas City. But there's something about, there's something about Mahomes and postseason games, something about a 34 or 35 year old receiver and postseason games. Uh, you saw it, the best game in his postseason career after most were calling him, listen, he's getting old, he's got a girlfriend, he's going to be fat very soon and, and uh, be out of football because of, because of the girl. And uh, I just think, I think right in Kansas City off in this game. In fact, did I said this game was going to be before they beat Baltimore, guys? I said that Kansas City would be probably five point dogs if they happen to win and beat Baltimore, which I didn't think they'd do. And um, after the game, when it opened up at two and a half, I grabbed it knowing at that point in time I knew I, I was wrong. And that's the best number you're going to see if you want Kansas City. What are you doing with props, Tony? Have you have you played any player doing, props yet? I have or, yes, I have or game props. Some. I have. I absolutely have. And I'm a I'm playing uh pretty much I'm playing unders on almost everything pass related. Purdy's passing yards, Mahomes is passing yards, game the game total, I'm under. Uh, I think the running backs, I think you're gonna play running backs hard and heavy. I think that's a I think that's a fair I think it's, that assessment's not only fair, I think it might be accurate. I like Christian McCaffrey. I like his running, receiving yards combined. I like Pacheco over 15 and a half rushing, um, uh, his long, his longest carry, 15 and a half yards. I like mm-hmm. his over on the carries as well as McCaffrey's. Um, almost everything I like, uh, if it's over, it's the running backs and almost everything else, guys, especially uh, IU, uh, the receivers. IU, I think he's uh, – What's his number? If you look, I think he's been overvalued, guys. If you remember last week, he's been hurt a little bit. I think he was 63 or something like that last week. And this week, he's almost 20 yards more. Why? Against a, a, a Chiefs defense, a passing defense uh, that's much better than the run. Uh, I think you get to play under there as well. I think the running backs are going to get a rack up a lot of player receptions, actually, uh, in, the play, in the reception prop uh, markets. Brock Purdy... The, the safest the safest thing he can do is dump it off to Christian McCaffrey. And you know there's going to be yeah. numerous times that they're going to take that route, maybe to, to Samuel as well, a couple of quick hits, quick hits to the tight end. But I do think that, um, look, McCaffrey's, I wish it was three and a half and not four and a half, but McCaffrey's reception prop is, uh, is four and a half. As far as uh, Pacheco is concerned, uh, Pacheco's is three and a half plus 140. I think it's 16 and a half is his receiving yard prop. I'd rather go over 16 and a half with the yards than to, to get four catches. But I think that Pacheco's receiving yard prop is a little light because they don't really mix it up very much, Kansas City. They really don't. I mean, Pacheco gets the ball, Kelsey gets the ball, and Rasheed Rice gets the ball. Nobody else. And Scantling, you know, caught that one pass. That was his pass, his catch of the game. Scantling is uh, is like his number is light too, and like Scantling is over under one and a half receptions. Rasheed Rice is actually six and a half receptions, guys. Wow, huh. it's a lot. Under. He had eight under. catches last week on nine targets. It was yeah. At, that, that, you just you just you just gave us evidence and reasons why you played the under eight catches on nine targets. Actually, his target average over the last um, four weeks or four games is. The targets aren't enough to justify six and a half catches or six catches. Or just not. And it's unbelievable. They're not going to bat that percentage. They were 11 for 11. Kelsey was targeted no, 11 right. times and he had 11 catches. He's six and a half, but I do think that he can still uh, get there. 
Some of the um, – all right, Tony, we'll have a couple of more minutes with you here. we got uh, Big Card Julio uh, joining us. We're stacked tonight. So what do you like tomorrow, college basketball? What are, what are you looking at here? You got some winners for us? I got a couple winners for you. I, I told you I was going to bet – I'm going to bet KU in the points at home against Houston because Houston's they're, – they're challenged offensively. They're obviously good defense. Secondly, I really like – I like North Carolina. Uh, tomorrow against Duke. North Carolina is a better team. And most people I know are playing the over in this North Carolina game. I personally think that if you've watched them, they've gotten better and better. More, They've been much more aggressive defensively, much more technically sound. And uh, if you look at last week, that total was 100. And it was changed. But there are 20 points under it. it. Under is what I love in this North Carolina game, plus North Carolina. And also, Oklahoma State, I Kansas State, at in Stillwater against Oklahoma State with, with Bryce Thompson out indefinitely. Without Bryce Thompson... K State's a winner by ten, and they're it's basically a pick 'em. K State were horrible this week against Oklahoma. And yeah. you know, listen, they came on as the game went on, but they, they didn't score enough points in the first half, and they really dug yeah. themselves a hole. For me, it would be Oklahoma State or pass. I don't trust K State. I agree. And again, I wouldn't. Uh, it's a price comp. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tony. Have a good one, buddy. Okay, I'll talk to you guys soon. direction or at least listen to some people with some different ideas if you were going to retain mike tomlin as coach and i believe with both feet that you should that you shouldn't let him really anywhere near this hire that he had proved over the years that this was not an era area of comfort or expertise for him pharrell coast to coast only on sports grid Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. It's a beautiful time. NBA players are going wild. If I had to guess, a lot of people are going to get real angry. No defense. No defense. No defense. Uh, see, I want people to understand this, okay? Because we're always honest. When I take that big pause, that means we're thinking about betting big. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman Trophy. The early line. And what it all means. Individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not bought at this deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. You have no idea. What the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live. Just prime time. Yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race late night. Bad. We waited for one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. Yeah. Then like the two and a half. Yeah. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
the late night anger management class continues countdown to kickoff continues as well we're going to bring in big card julio julio rosario in a couple of minutes cam stewart in the house cam went over some of his super bowl picks i like the winning margin look you know super bowls in the past used to often be blowouts they you know it was rare it was like oh it was a surprise it was actually a close game and i remember because i've been saying i say this all the time but i've been wrong the last couple of years with it in that the point spread doesn't matter like, the point spread normally never mattered in the Super Bowl. Like, literally, there was, like, up to 56 Super Bowls, guys. The point spread mattered, like, four times, right? Like, if the, the underdog would just win outright. So, like, there wasn't a lot of, like, close Super Bowls, right? Especially, like, in the older days, man. In the 80s and stuff, it was insane. It was, like, blowout city all the time. Like, if you look at look at some of the scores, San Francisco won 38-16 over Miami. Chicago beat the Patriots 46-10. Giants beat Denver 39-20. Washington beat Denver 42-10. Uh, San Francisco, Cincinnati was a close one, uh, 2016. Then San Francisco beat Denver 55-10. Giants, Buffalo, classic, 2019. Then Buffalo lost 52-17, 50 to, you know, 30 to 13. San Francisco beat San Diego, and that's who we were talking about earlier, 49-26. So, like in the old days, Super Bowls were always blowouts, but the last two years, Cam. Both games have been close. Last year was 38-35, and the year before was 23-20. So the mm-hmm. one to six winning bet, like his one in the last two years. I don't have a problem with it. You know what I mean? But before that, we had a 31-9 game. Tampa beat Kansas City one 31-9. Kansas yep. City beat San Francisco 31-20 when they played four years ago. The Patriots beat the Rams by 10, 13-3. Uh, we had a 41-33 game in New England and uh, and Philadelphia in that 34-28 game. I wouldn't be surprised if this game ended up in the 34-28 range either. It might be a little high. I got 28-24. Maybe it'll be a little, you know what I mean, a little higher scoring. But Kansas City's defense is really good. It so is. it's not like San Francisco are going to have an easy time getting into the 30s. I don't want to get carried away. I've got San Francisco scoring like three touchdowns, maybe four touchdowns and two field goals. So it gets us to like the 28-30 range. Some of the props that I've got, and these aren't even player props, but this is what I've got, and I'm going to be playing every one of these. So they're not just thoughts. I'm putting money on them. I do think there's going to be more points in the second half than the first half. Over the years, this is a winning bet. But there's been instances where it, it has it's pushed or it hasn't always won. But in this instance, I really do believe it. You know, I think both teams are going to be kind of cautious early. They're going to run the football. I know San Francisco knows. Shanahan's smart enough to know. I don't want to fall behind to Mahomes here with Purdy. I'm going to play. I'm just going to give it to McCaffrey. So I, I wouldn't even be surprised if there was the no score in the first six minutes hit. But I didn't pull the trigger on that. But I will play. There will be more points in the second half. Total penalties accepted is 10 and a half. Four years ago when Vinovich, Vinovich was the same referee, actually, and this is only a second Super Bowl that he's done as head ref. So he called nine penalties in the last one. Yeah, the prop is 10 and a half this time. You've got two very disciplined football teams, not to mention the theme with the NFL refs over the last couple of months has been let them play. So mm-hmm. I don't think there's going to be 11 penalties in this game. I'm going under 10 and a half penalties accepted in this game. First offensive play in a game. I'm going with the run, minus 140. I believe that San Francisco doesn't want Purdy to do anything crazy and turn the ball over with the first play of the game. And I think Kansas City want to establish Pacheco and the ground game. For the last five Super Bowls, the first offensive snap of the game has been a rushing play. It's minus 140. We're going to play it. Both teams to score 20 points. I do believe that both teams are at the end of the 20s. And a good thing about this prop is if you put, like, a nice chunk on it, you could argue, well, it doesn't really matter who wins the game for you. Like, you know, you're going to have a side. But, all right, I already got both teams in the 20s. Now let's get San Francisco home. But I'd be very surprised if one of these teams got stuck into the teens uh, here. I think, you know, I'm not saying, you know, 29, you know, they're both going to get to 28. But they don't have to. Right, 21-20. Good thing about this bet, too, is softens the, the blow of the over on the 47 and a half as well if you're betting the over. Um, we're going to go with long field goal over 46 and a half yards. Butker's a badass that, like, drills 52 yarders in the snow in the playoffs. They trust them to take long kicks. Moody, 
I know the media want to pile on kid kickers all the time, but San Francisco trusts Moody. It's indoors. Like, dude, the guy was a third-round draft pick. Like, they'll cut his ass next year, but if they need to kick a 49-yarder or something or a 48-yarder or 47-yarder, they will. I think there's going to be more than three-and-a-half field goals in this game. And the good thing about this mm-hmm. one is plus money. It was plus 140 earlier in the week, and I didn't take it. It's plus 120 right now. Over, like under, three-and-a-half field goals. We're going to go over three-and-a-half field goals in this game. I'm going to play the first score of the game to be a field goal as well. This is just my gut hunch, but I've got Kansas City scoring the first. I think KC scores first, but I think they score three points. So I got first score of the game, plus 150, field goal. Um, We've got first reception. First reception by the San Francisco 49ers, Christian McCaffrey. Plus 275. I think their first pass will be a little dump-off screen pass to McCaffrey. Plus 275. First Kansas City player to catch a pass. Travis Kelsey. Plus 175. I could totally see KC getting the ball, running the ball on first down, running the ball on second down, and throwing to Kelsey on third down because that's what they did all the damn time to my Buffalo Bills, and we couldn't stop it. So I think they're probably – I can see Kelsey getting the first catch of the game early. Plus 175. Um, we like, will the team that scores first to win the game? No. I think KC are going to score first, but I think San Francisco are going to win the game. We hit this last year, plus 140, and um, I'm going to hit it again. Five of the last seven Super Bowls, the team that scored first actually lost the Super Bowl. So mm-hmm. this prop, if you bet the uh, the no, you're five and two in the last seven Super Bowls, and you're getting it uh, at plus money. We brought up the octopus earlier. Don't feel bad if you don't know about the octopus. Um, I was like, what the hell is an octopus? What do you mean? Will there be an octopus? I better read the fine print about the rules on this one. And as we stated, an octopus is if a player scores a touchdown and then gets the two-point convert right after the touchdown. So not later in the game like Cam wanted. No, uh, it has to be... (laughs) What's that? The crack in the it's game. Not an you know, that's, that's a good yeah, prop exactly. too. It's not an easy prop yeah. to get. Yeah. No, it's not. But, <laughs> it's hard. But no, it has to be on the same one. You got to get all eight points. That's why they call it the octopus because it's the eight. Mm-hmm. So you got to get all eight points. It's plus thirteen hundred, and it's mm-hmm. one of these deals, guys, with this one, where it's probably not going to happen. But now that we've talked about it, and if it does happen, we're going to go, oh, my God, I can't believe we talked about the octopus and we didn't cash it at plus 1,300. The thing is, San Francisco could score a touchdown with McCaffrey and then give it to him on, uh, for the two, right? Um, Kelsey could score a touchdown. Then they could throw another quick hit to him, potentially. Debo Samuel, even, could score on the wild. Like, there's, there's guys that could potentially do it, but the Chiefs and the Niners never go for two. But I'm just throwing it out there. It's plus 1,300. Big Card Julio is now with us. Uh, Julio, we still have a couple of minutes left. Good to see you tonight. How you doing? Wait for the big game, right? A lot. There's going to be so much chatter between now and kickoff two weeks time. Uh, I need I like all this time way. to get all my bets in. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna take me this long. Like, I'm mm-hmm. glad it's not Sunday. I'd be panicked. Yeah, you got car- oh. you got you're gonna yeah, because your finger's gonna look like a yeah, a carpal tunnel after you hit the key so many times. Like- triple triple clicks. <laughs> yeah. This is when you too, this is the time too when you realize how much money you actually bet on a game, too. You're like, damn, I'm already like fifteen hundred in. I haven't even taken it. You're gonna be one of those yet. guys who with like the bowling wrist. Oh my yeah, man, I'm hit a <laughs> lot a lot of scrolling, a lot of hitting. Carpal tunnel. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna print my sheets out. Actually, I'm gonna go to the hotel yeah. like office there and like the fab. I love the print out, print. So I'll have yes. all my picks like printed out on a sheet. I'll be like, all right, because yeah, I could be getting into the 30s here, Julio. But uh, before we talk Super Bowl, Julio, big uh, weekend of college basketball. What are you looking at tomorrow? College basketball. I'm going for some home underdogs tomorrow, including St. John's at Madison Square Garden against UConn. Give me the Red Storm plus 140 on the money line against Connecticut. How about Detroit Mercy? They're the worst team in college basketball. Oh, it sounds like a 
something just popped. Just it sounds just like shot. Julio uh, hit a it's summit like a there in the, the rock. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know, that was like firecrackers, man. What the hell's going thought, on we here? We thought like it sounded like a light <laughs> pot exploded on you there, Julio. You all right? Yeah. yeah, I'm doing okay. I hope I hope my connection's not as bad as Tony Finn's, but I think we're, we're we're right up there tonight. Robert Morris are taking on Detroit Mercy tomorrow. Detroit are the worst team in college basketball. Zero wins. Zero wins on the season. Give me Robert Morris minus five tomorrow in college basketball. And Kansas, when's the last time you remember Kansas as a home underdog at Allen Fieldhouse? You sound like Tony Finn. That was his. Yeah, that we're was all his saying life. the same thing. So yeah. is that the blind bet? I'm going to find out. When was last time? When was last when time? When was the last time? Yeah. Long time I'm going ago. Kansas on the money line. I'm going Kansas on the money line just, just on principle for them being a home underdog. Western Illinois, my alma mater, this is the best Western Illinois team, I think, in history. When I just graduated from there, they went to the conference championship game. But this is the most athletic Western Illinois group I've ever seen. They're on the road against Southeast Missouri State. Give me the leather, Leathernecks minus four and a half. And we're going to ride name. the Cowboys. We're going to ride the Wyoming Cowboys on the Wyoming. road in Vegas oh, UNLV. against UNLV. Ooh. Give me the Pokes plus nine and a half. Go Wyo. Are you going to that game? I was game, thinking game? about going. I was thinking about it. Yeah, taking taking the visiting team be the be the bad guy. I like that. That's well, good. I like that they're getting points too. I wouldn't trust yes. you and LV. Yeah, I wouldn't trust you and LV I, in this spot. You know what? We'll see. I'll see if I. Well, I'll post some pictures if I end up going to the game. It's one of those deals Leather now net. that it's getting closer. I'm like, yeah, I'm probably really not going to go. No, I'd probably yeah. I'd rather just sit in the book and watch North Carolina and Duke and everything. Probably. I don't mind betting on it, but it's going to be bad basketball. It's like it Wyoming and UNLV. Like it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a premium yeah. matchup by any stretch, but just, it is basketball. Just take, just take the points. It's, and, it's and not the Rose cash. Bowl. I was just that. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you that. No. Yeah. <laughs> I just punched in. When was Cat Kansas uh, last a home dog? And you know what popped up? CNN. Yeah. Kansas dog makes 60 mile journey back to her original home. <laughs> <laughs> what a pooch. No, I, I gotta be more specific. I gotta put in yes. Jayhawks, the home dog. Yes. But yeah, pretty crazy story. A Kansas dog went missing for days. Turned out the dog left and went sixty miles back to the previous house that they used to live at. Dogs are amazing. And it was found sixty miles away at the previous house. That's insane, huh? Yep. That's a good that's a good dog. They're very good. No, I trust, I trust me. These dogs, these it's cadaver like the dogs time, are unreal. Uh, they find anything, man. They're just, they're, they're, they're unreal. They found like the remains from like a 60 year old case the other day I was watching. It's like these dogs are the best. Amazing. It's like the episode Another of next. Seinfeld when uh, Kramer and Newman yep. and Elaine take the dog out to the country and the dog comes oh, back with Kramer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All the way to the city. Elaine couldn't sleep. That's right. We got to get rid of this dog. They're going to knock it off. That was a classic. That's a good episode. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was a good episode. <laughs> into a top five seed in the East, Jalen Brunson should get better consideration for the MVP. It is deserved. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Chargers have the fifth pick in the National Football League draft. 
there's a lot of different um, there's a lot of different like roads that they could take uh, with this pick. And for the record as well, there's a few sports books out there already that already have next year's Super Bowl numbers up. The Chargers are like 30 to 1. So there's a lot of work to do. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. He feels like he's got unfinished business, right? I, he won the national championship, did what he said he wanted to do, going back to Ann Arbor. And, you know, he coached. I think with the Raiders as an assistant and then got the job with the Niners and then uh, went to title games, went to Super Bowls, uh, lost to his brother. And I think you're right. Unfinished business. Go back. Try to win a Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast. Only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions. Let's roll. All right, we're in a three-minute warning. I can't believe it. We're done already. So uh, we're going to be on um, Monday at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific, Sirius XM Channel 159. Some of the affiliates tuning in, we're not going to be on. There's going to be alternate uh, programming on because we're on earlier due to the Super Bowl. Uh, but we will be live at the MGM Grand Sportsbook um, from 5 until 7 local time. Come on uh, by. And uh, the set is open to everybody right in the middle of the sports book. Have a couple of drinks and uh, bet on some games at MGM Grand. Julio, who are you betting on in the big game? Who's going to win? Kansas City. I'm going with the Kansas City Chiefs to win yet another Super Bowl. I just like the Chiefs and the dog. And I like the Chiefs' defense over the last couple of weeks. So uh, give me Kansas City. I think they'll get all the calls, too. Okay. It looks like it's just you and me. Everybody loves you, Kansas buddy. City. Yeah, if, we're, oh, if San no, Francisco like wins, that. it's going to be like the old Super Bowl when the Saints beat the Colts. Marenzi, just us counting the money, and everybody else, everyone's going to be crying. It's me and you, man. That's it. I'll, 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 San Francisco. I'll, I'll have more on the PWHL probably than I will on the Super Bowl. Wow. You're really into it. <laughs> well, you're you're, you're really loving this ladies' just, hockey league. He's, 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 hey, man, he's, if he's it hooked. gets 70% to the under five and a half, man, it's just cash, cash, cash. cash. I hit the All-Star game last night. I hit Team King, but I lost the stupid total by half a goal. Are you betting the NHL All-Star games tomorrow? You know, I was thinking about it. I, I was thinking blindly betting the over, but I, I don't know if these guys are really going to be up for the I have it's no tough. idea. It's hard. I'm going to take – I don't want to go against my Canuck guys, but I'm going to take uh, Team McDavid to win it all. Whatever the guy's just it is it is what it is. He's that good, and he's got Leon Drysidel and all kinds of other snipers on the team. So ultimately, and it's like plus two sixty too. So listen, there's only four teams, guys. You're getting plus two fifty to plus two seventy five for all four of them. Take a stab. You hit one of them for fun. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna go crazy with it, but that'll be my pick. I'm gonna take um, Team McDavid to win the NHL All Star Tournament. We'll see you in Vegas. Other than that, you're on your own later. 